there, there's a huge emotional toll that first responders have. And I don't know if I was fully aware of what that toll was going to be when I first started. I'm very, very aware of it now. And we get there, and I remember the husband opening the door for us, and we could see the, the wife, and she was maybe 10, 15 feet further back in the apartment facing us. And she had her baby in her arms, and she had a butcher knife in the other one at the baby's throat. And she kept screaming for us to leave. I asked the people to please give me my radio or help me get my gun. Nothing. Uh, they stepped on my chest to get on a bus to leave. Twelve people we wanted to help. They may survive the streets, but they might not survive the career. Still, a lot of people believe that if you hear it or read it in the news, it's got to be true. True things get kind of set by the wayside for the sensationalism. People like the drama. They just want to sensationalize things. Cops were even justified, but they were, they were convicted and tried by the media. I'm not, I'm not playing. Take your hands out your pocket. Take your hands out your pocket. I don't know anybody that puts on a uniform and goes out to work and says, I can't wait to shoot somebody today. Police officers are being killed all over this country, and it's, a, it's leadership. Why does the media push these few incidents to make it look like it's happening all the time? I don't know. True journalism is going completely out the door. It's definitely sensationalized. You can see the amount of damage being done uh, just by putting information out before too much is known about it. Interesting to discover how the negative perception that the public is being fed by the media and others. We all have to go home at the end of the night. And I've been to officers' funerals. I don't want to go to any more of them, but it's, it's probably going to happen. Hey, everyone, this is Chris Diamond, holding him in uh, number 30 Broad Street, 1022. 